will finally let Elkin on, remind people as to why they were favorites, because if not, BLG are getting sent to the loser's bracket. Is it a Lucian Nami angle? What do you think? Do you trust Pays and Lahens? Ooh. I don't know if it's about trust. It's just about do they think that it is the next strongest option? I think they might alternatively could look towards Averis, but Pays... Well, apparently I trust them all. Well, you do, I, mean, right? <laughs> I, I think it makes sense. Lucian or... Vi, maybe? Lucian Zin? Uh, it depends if they want to keep giving Canyon the ability to counter pick. They could just lock in the Nami now, see what BLG do, and then kind of respond. Because this bot lane has proven that they're happy to just kind of bite the bullet, tank it, whatever, just so that they can better set up their teammates for success. And both of the kind of aggressive laning options for Callista supports are available. Rumble and uh, Nico, obviously the two that we've seen the most. See if that's something that BLG wants to do. Yeah, I was fight. about to say, I was just But, okay, hear me out. So, he, so, so this is okay. a thing with Chovy. He has all these cool, the Yone, but if, if he thinks Azir is the best pick, he's blinding Azir every single game. If he yes. thinks Corky's the best pick, which seems to be the case right now, he is blinding Corky every single game. And unsurprisingly, it's going to be the case as Shun love this look. Shun not being on a really, really big power pick early on, I think it was a large part of why that game felt so insanely one-sided for Genji, as Canyon just got to take over completely. This Vi is a power pick into slippery things like the Lucian. It's a poppy angle, gentlemen. Uh, when is it not? I'm I mean, starting to be concerned <laughs> that it's just all. Maybe Poppy is perhaps just strong. <laughs> of course. I really think BLG should consider banning it, especially if they're thinking about blinding a Cassante once more. Um, so Genji, they're gonna make that mid pool smaller, take the Orianna away from Knight. Um, I wonder if they're fine giving a Zia tonight. We know that it isn't one of his best performing champions. Um, Nico is something that they could put higher on the ban list if they're concerned about it. But we'll have to wait and see. Did Genji even want to ban another mid laner? Maybe they want to ban out something like a top laner, the Cassante, the Vayne, if it, depending on what they want to, depends what they want to pick here. Might, it might go for the Vayne ban and then just R for the Cassante, again, give over counter pick. Although they already know that the Vi is there, but maybe they want to keep it a secret. Really good shout out on the Nico. I think Nico, Vi in particular, is one of those one two combos that makes it so hard to play out any of the mid game fights. That has looked really good on the type of picks where he can have the mid game impact. And agency really has been the name of the yeah. game for BLG. Game one, they had so much of it. Genji have done such a beautiful job in game two and three's draft of taking it away from them. Now you've got a Vi, you've got a Callista, the Renata, lots of playmaking, early aggressive tools. Hey. Poppy will be banned. Betty on a wall. Uh, well, eh. you know, I'm thinking of that SpongeBob meme of do you want to watch me run to that rock and Canyon going, want to watch me lock in Nidalee? Want to watch me do it again? <laughs> yeah, but instead of a rock, he's running into wins against BLG. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll see if he runs into a rock this time around. I think BLG are certainly praying for that angle. Okay. Canyon, this is not what we signed up for. Do you reckon he's got some sort of term in, in his contract that says, okay, you're allowed two nearly games and then back to tanks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's that's like the Cossacks game, you know, that was the one thing he got. <laughs> yeah. He tried it against Fnatic, but they were like, oh, hey, calm down now. All right, yeah. so Maokai. The one thing I do like about the Maokai specifically is that already BLG are very clearly going to co hard commit to playing a very short range, skirmish heavy style with this vibe, with this Kalista, with the Renata. And Maokai is really strong in those type of comps. We've also seen that that combo of Nami wave plus Maokai ults can be really good for mid-game fight setups. Mid-game fight setup is also just protecting that back line. Yeah. Azir, again, if you're not familiar with Knight, he's known for so many different picks. Azir is really not one of them. Obviously, a world-class player, no doubt in anyone's mind. He's been but playing it more this split in this certainly. year. He's been trying it, but the now this is more like it. <laughs> yes! Okay! <laughs> <laughs> and I like it. If you're going to go out in a series, go out playing something you want to play. Knight trying something new on the international stage. Vex, a champion. Obviously, favored in a lot of these matches where there are dashes can interrupt a lot of these abilities. I mean, this is definitely much more within the, the, the wheel book of Knight. Like, when we think about him, Azir is not something that he has a huge amount of success with. Definitely he can, like, play it, but not to the same proficiency as so many other mid laners around the world. This, on the other hand, career-wise, he has a 75% win rate on the champion. He has so much playmaking potential on the champion. Against dashes, it can be really effective thanks to the passive. And uh, I'm excited for it because I think that when you have Cassante, Vi, you want something that could dive alongside them, and Vex is a really good champion at working with that. So, 
I I'm excited to see if this can work because BLG needed a change. We needed to see a greater impact from Knight, and I think we're going to get to see it with this Vex. Going to have to, and if we're learning something, this tournament, G2, they paved the way with it. But Gen G showing it even in this series, go for picks that might not lie within the meta, but that work for you. In this case, I think the Vex is amazing, as you already pointed out. The fact that now it won't be Shun diving alone, he has a diving buddy to go with him, is going to be pivotal. Do you think the disengage from Gen G is something that can be tough? And with BLG's backs against the wall, all of Chengdu coming alive. Jio fuel for the effort ahead of them. Only two back-to-back -back wins. One gain, one pick, one angle, not enough to secure their place in the grand finals. Let's see if BLG can bring us to game five off the back of a Vex. It would definitely be an interesting one. In game one, Chovy tested Knight, and Knight passed that test with flying colors. Oh yeah. Game two and three, Chovy bounced back with some comfort picks of his own and showed that he is not a mid laner to be messed with. And now here in game four, Knight bringing out a little bit of flair once more into Chovy's Corky, of all things. Let's see how this one pans out. Game four, BLG versus Genji. As the crowd goes absolutely crazy, BLG, last time these two teams met, it went to five games as well. Then it was BLG who went up 2-0. Genji fought back to that final game and then were maybe able to make it work. This Corky though, I really feel like it is very similar to things we've seen before, like with the Nautilus mid, where someone plays it and it looks so broken, and then everyone else plays it. <laughs> and it takes us a really long time to realize that Corky in this tournament has, has not been that good. If you look at this champion in solo queue in the context of this patch, 44% rain rate, abysmal. <laughs> in the hands of most mid laners in this tournament, 50% win rate. It's a coin flip. In the hands of Chovy, it is only four games, this being his fifth. 75%, 3 and 1. He plays it different. He plays it better. Gen G play with it better. And that's something that BLG are going to have to navigate. They predicted the swap. Gen G's here to answer, and Elk oh, doesn't they know. know. They don't know. The crowd hoping the noise carries through. Big damage onto Elk. Positive start. Elk and on. Want to come out on top in the 2v2 here. They were supposed to be stronger. They were supposed to be better. Now, finally, we have an explosive 2v2. Pays and Lahens already with this, the lead. I think this is the first time at MSI that they've matched the swap. Yeah. So we've got bot lane as top. And the crucial thing about doing this is it gives Keen a good laning phase. Twisted Fate doesn't have to be miserable for the first few levels. And he can actually abuse the strength of picking TF into this matchup. That's why we saw BLG, even though they had a really aggressive bot lane in game number one, swap away. We highlighted it back then. The main reason being that the early levels for the Xanta is where he gets so much of his power, or uh, rather of the Twisted Fate, is where he gets so much of his power, where you take control of that lane. It does mean, though, a big test for Pays and Lahans. Last game, with the help of Canyon, we are able to get the better. Can they do it as well? A couple autos here, Flatfoot on the handshake, oh. Pays, quick cleanse, good damage down. The Ignite taking Pays now trying to get a bit more damage in the trade, but Elk is low as well, and it's Lahans who's stepping forward, empowering himself over Pays to try to finish the job. Both junglers are going to be looking towards that top side of the map. Pays, flash forward. <laughs> Pays La Hens just beating up Elkin on, and this is probably one of their best bot lanes. Like, obviously, you often attribute out to his Lucian, but uh, that level of aggression, the cleanse from on with the handshake, I love the way on uses Renata in the early levels, but the way that Pays reacted was flawless, and it's the bot lane of Genji that come out ahead. It's that early trade. It's the fact that they read the play, that they were able to get that chunk onto Elk. Mm. Otherwise, that play would not have even been close. And look at the swap now. Elk actually making his way towards bot lane. They want to try and make the swap happen, but Genji read it. Pays is on his way to bot too. Genji would seem to be in the heads of BLG in this early game. The TP from Bin will come through. He's going to go and catch the top wave. But to the disappointment of Elk, he's going to find that Pays is, is ready and waiting as he returns to the bot lane. Certainly is. Gank in the mid lane. Getting the early flash. Chovy respecting, knowing if the fear connects. The Fist guaranteed to follow. Big win. That means that post six, Shun having a great opportunity here towards the mid lane. This is, Shun is a level up, but this is where the bot lane advantage comes into play. Pace already on the wave. Because it's actually on that's picked up the experience lead due to him sticking around for a little bit longer there near it. And top 
this matchup, Pokin did have to give up a decent amount of the CS, ghosted yeah. back towards the lane to ensure that he did stay in this matchup. But it's not the end of the world. You can see Goldwise is passive, kind of carrying him yeah, through. Of course. So it's uh, it's not too bad. And been able to weather the worst of it. The bot lane difference, even after all the skirmishing, a lot of summoners were used, but no significant advantage gained either way. Uh, Knight, though, playing very aggressively in the bot lane. Sorry, in the bot lane, in the mid lane 1v1, I should say. Nice to see some uniqueness coming out from Knight in the mid lane. One big thing, though, is that this Kalista and I think, gains a lot of power once you get from level 3 onwards, particularly before the level 6 is available for Pays and Lands. There is a window here. Shun, his early impact has been so pivotal for the dominance of Elk and on. Hanyan is in the general vicinity. Don't know if Gen.G is going to be able to contest because Knight, level 6 now hit, gets the shove in mid. It looks like Genji are going to have to give up the objective. Very often we would see BLG threatening a dive here, but because the Dragon has been started, that's unlikely to be the case. Canyon trying to be zoned away by Knight, who has pressure in the mid lane one versus one. You can see some really nice damage coming out from On and Elk, but they're just going to use this pressure to convert it into an early objective. They're not going to risk the dive for now. Much more control in this game for early game from BLG. Much better tools to be proactive on the map. And the pays have to be careful, but have the luxury of good vision, giving them all the information they need to play safe here. Here comes Chovy. They're on their way. Forky on the way. Double bubble is big. Bit of poke coming from Chovy. Now BLG can see this is not the play they were looking for. Knight taking a bit of poke here. Good chain back, and now it's first blood. It's clean from the side of BLG. Lehen's overconfident. The handshake from On was immaculate. The chain damage that came down from BLG didn't give Lahens an opportunity to get away. And you can see the difference. Knight with control over mid, the way he works with Shun to pressure bot. This is the style that BLG like to leverage in the early game. And they're off to an early lead. Crucially for Gen.G, Keen is doing okay here towards his top side. This is the matchup we were talking about that you want to try and keep Vin out of. And we see again, there we go towards top. Go Elkin on, might also be to contest here for the early I think it is the Grubs, grubs. Yeah. I mean, they have the lead now, right? It's not a significant one, but being able to pick up that early lethality onto Elk means that he's going to be feeling pretty strong. There is a big experience difference between Pays and Elk, which is something to keep our eyes on. But overall, BLG feeling confident in game four. BLG first on the move up, Elk still only level four, but uh, should be pretty proactive in starting the objective there. Chovy, though, going to take that opportunity to poke out Knight, knowing that he has the immediate man advantage. So far, just two of the grubs. Flash forward coming in from Canyon. That's the destiny. Knight, does he want to try and turn this one back? Good gold card to kick things off. Just going to be a quick pick onto On. It's the TF paying its dividends. Keen surprising BLG, catching them off guard. Then we'll be able to crash away, but because the kill actually goes over to the TF here, he's still going to be working from a deficit. No one is going towards, but Keen is moving over now. Yeah, he's going to be a little bit late, so he's going to lose a decent amount of farm as Bin secures a few more plates. But I like that flash in from Canyon too, recognizing there was a window for Genji to leverage their numbers and get a winning fight. They get one grub in exchange. Nice positioning from Bin, really zoning Keen away from as much farm as possible. He's really making things difficult for Keen. That wave is just disappearing. Oh, Finn trading his health bar to zone him off, knowing that his all-in threat is too great for Keen to contend with. Eventually does get pushed backwards, but now the ulti coming in from Canyon. Cat's on the way. On. No tools to escape. Elk not level six. Excellent timing from Genji just to get the summoner. It's another summoner gone. Jun and Knight. Oh, again, look at them working together. Jun and Knight threatening the bot lane. They might be top now, but that doesn't change the aggression coming out from this mid-jungle duo. Crucially, Pays burned ultimate. They know Canyon has no ultimate either. Might be an angle for a dive on the top side, but BLG don't want to overcommit. In the meantime, Ben starting to get pushed in here again by Keen. Still tough with the Maokai there. Even without the ultimate, a lot of CC available, a lot of stall. And you see BLG, they keep looking for these openings, not giving them as Keen. Dash forward with the W, doesn't quite able to connect on the Q3. Alti though, Ben wants to make the difference. Ben wants to be the one to make it happen. It's the ghost out from Keen. Alti now coming in. Shadow Strike gonna connect. Knight ready to fall if he needs to. Can just reactivate the all. Gets the kill. BLG on the top side. That's the combo we were talking about. That's Knight with agency. And Canyon gets found in his jungle. Ends up going down. Elk, Fate's call. 
flash forward. They just want to obliterate this Nami. Lens is so damn squishy. Hail of Blades and Lethality. They finish him off, and now Pace trying desperately to turn it back. Elf with a blinking health bar, but already the cleanse coming out from Pace. Does he want to chase this? How long in the Relentless Pursuit? Oh, yeah. That's enough. Pace taking down Elf, but Shun here to punish. There's already a TP, though. Pace needs to just get a bit more time. Needs to get away from the ball breaker for the handshake. Oh, oh the alley oop. But Shun ends it quick with a fist to the face. On is firm with his grip, and he moves the enemy where he pleases. Well played by him to set up the kill onto La Hens. Pays feeling desperate, flashes in to get something back. But it is a one team fight once again. I said, I should. It's not a team fight, it's more just like BLG dominating in the early game. It's not translating into a significant gold lead, but look at the difference in confidence from BLG. Very different look here. Elk going in, they know there is no ultimate on pace, just not enough damage. Lahens crucially doesn't have his wave yet, so there's no risk whatsoever. Pays, he hesitates. He, he for a second there. Yeah. And you know he had the right instinct, ends up trading, but that's still a two for one trade. I don't think they're going to feel And look at this handshake here, really nice, just as the dash comes out. The LG <laughs> leading in kills. Fans unsurprisingly enthusiastic as Genji try to set up around the Drake. Chobi already pushing in the bottom lane. Lucian Nami posted up mid. Wave is here for hands. If Genji get first set up, they should still be really, really strong in these type of Drake fights. They are here first, but BLG take control. My hands has to be incredibly careful. Very squishy. Knight with long range engage in the fork. Catch. Shadow strike. Come on, tries to find the handshake. It does not work. And now it's the package across the entire team. On just wants to turn it back. Shadow strike. Shadow surge. Excuse me. The fear coming out. Knight trying to burn through pace. It's so down quick, but he doesn't have the ball that he needs. Now it has been stepping forward. Unstoppable. Trying to lock down Candy. The fear coming through, but he can't even walk away as Shun grabs the kill. It's a one for one, but BLG have fought their way into the Dragon Pit. They're looking to secure their second of the game. And they're getting scrappy. They're willing to skirmish. Genji caught off guard as they're forced to retreat. Genji invests a lot there in starting the fight, but that means that when the eventual engage comes through, you don't have a whole lot of tools. That's again Knight setting up that re-engage with the Vax, able, even with ongoing down at the start of the fight, to find an advantage. Sean might not be done yet. He didn't use his ultimate Keen. Ben, walking forward, has the Q3, not quite going to connect on Keen. Nice sidestep, gold card to interrupt the Vi, doesn't want any channel to now come through, but it's Canyon looking to turn the play back. Lehens on the way in, Ben uses the footwork to dash over the wall, on there to back them up. The play is going to fizzle, oh, wow. nice cover from the side of Gen. I really thought that Ben was going to be punished there, but his dash over the wall was well placed. Gets away to safety with Jun, and now we look back at this fight. It starts off with on. Trying to control the space with the handshake. It doesn't quite connect. Remember that he doesn't have any flash to get out of this. So an overall good collapse. Nice ulti too, does some initial damage. And then Knight with the ultimate. Chunks out pace, almost gets the kill, but doesn't quite have enough damage at this point in the game. Keen is zoned away. And then they're able to lock down Canyon, ultimately resulting in a one for one. Crucially, Knight there not getting hit by the bubble. It means that there is not enough CC. There's not enough burst. Genji has to back off and basically leave Canyon to his fate. It's going to be more incremental leads, but as you were saying, Vedi, it doesn't translate in a sizable gold lead. There are two dragons taken by BLG, Chemtech Soul, or yeah, Chemtech Soul on the rift here. But Chovy on this Corky, this is not what he's about. It's not about the early to mid game. It's about the mid to late game. So I think for BLG, getting that mid lane turret is going to be huge. When you start choking Genji out of vision, this time around, outside of the ultimate from Keen, there's no easy face check. Even Canyon, who obviously is the tankiest member, is going to sh get shredded in second if he just walks into a brush. Have to be so respectful of the Vex and the Vi together, the duo with a ton of burst damage in this game, as well as the Lethality Callista. Mid game, really where BLG's composition can take over. For now, Genji oh, yeah. dead even in gold. They're feeling good. Yes, there are two Drakes. If they can deny a third, they buy so much more time for Chovy. Five grub buff is big, or four grub buff, obviously, with the five overall. Big for BLG, but they have to find a way to push this lead forward. Now look at these lane assignments. They've actually sent Knight down to bot lane. They want Bin in a position to quickly collapse. Both TPs are, of course, available. But uh, it's Chovy now going for the reset. As I imagine, we're going to be setting up for this Herald. Will that item be completed for Chovy? Bit delayed, obviously, as he did off oh, the Hex Drinker. His back actually got interrupted. I think, maybe, did he cancel it? Waiting. Will Chovy complete his item? He will. 
There we go. I know, I know, Chovy. I He's gonna... Oh! Oh, okay. Never mind. He TP'd Bolt, too. By, he TP'd Bolt. Hang on. He doesn't feel like they're well, in a strong enough position Herald, to fight. Though. Yeah, I guess so. Free Herald puts out of BLG. We talked about it before. This is clearly the time where BLG really want to fight. Gen G willing to concede a lot around the map not to give them that fight. Herald already dropped. Easy angle to try and approach mid here. You can see Pay stepping up to try to clear the wave, but Knight Look, waiting Knight's in the angle. fog. Has been spotted? Has not been spotted? Now gonna go for the Shadow Ooh. Surge. Doesn't hit, crucially. Scary, scary, scary. But, uh, oh my. <laughs> there we go. Destiny now coming in on, trying to turn it back. Excellent use, he managed to stun the Lucian. On, just got away with murder. Hostile takeover, saving his life. Nice auto attack there, Keen. <laughs> throws the card at his buddy. He's like, that's, whoa, why are you doing that to me? That's the theoretical thing that every Renata player dreams of that literally never happens. <laughs> oh, wait, 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 the TP. TP trying to punish. Recall coming in. Bin wants to interrupt. Chobi, Chobi caught stopping for a brief moment. Didn't see Bin coming. Bin now locking him up in melee range. Has already used the pullback. Chobi holding onto the Valk for a moment, but he can't get over the wall. Bin on the chase. Yes, has used the ghost. Chobi is just going to get knocked down. Doesn't want to give an assist away. And Bin, oh, making Jengdu come alive with a solo on the side lane. Listen to that crowd roar. Genji have been getting the better of BLG, but now the momentum is completely shifted. All of the agency that Jinji has had in the previous two games seems to have been stripped away from them as the Herald now being dropped mid and BLG right. looking for another tower. Trying to find the angle. Oh, has the passive up with the fear. The charge now coming in, breaking mid lane. You mentioned it earlier, Chronicle. <laughs> Chronicle. Chronicle, excuse me. No, that's fine. Yeah, I missed the, you know, missed the little thing. But here we are, breaking open mid lane. Now shifting their attention to bot BLG again, just upping the pace of the game so rapidly, matching topside. Forcing a response. Not giving Gen.G the opportunity to start scaling into this game. There is still a lot of team fighting power with this Corky when you get to mid to late. But BLG, they're not just finding Gen.G on these timers. They're not just playing around Chovy's package. Instead, look for constant punishes. Bin getting the kill is big. There is still a contest possibility though for Gen.G. But if you end up losing this one, I think the gold deficit is gonna just get harder and harder to come back from. And we'll see if they're actually willing to fight here. Cause when you look at the spikes, they're not looking that strong. But it's a soul point for BLG if they pick this up. You can see here the MasterCard lane economy snapshot. Big lead for Shun, the buy, level 10. That shutdown on, for Bin. That's gonna be big. Ben with the lead because of that pick on to Chovy. But Genji first on the setup. Package available for Chovy. BLG have to respect that cooldown. Ben a bit of a sidestep there. Gold card locked for Keen as they just hover in Fog of War. Shun on the flank will be spotted out by the Sapling. And another flank coming. Now Ben stepping up, big pulling onto Elk is a solid start to the fight. Pull back onto the jungle, trying to get him out of the pit. Canyon in the midst of everything though, he just wants to get this back. Ulti's traded left and right, tidal wave. Not a lot of effect, and it's still Shun next to the Drake. Shun trying to turn it back, but it is Canyon who will deny with the steal. Knight connects on the Shadow Surge, but it doesn't look like they want to take the fight. BLG need to get the hell out. It's Keen stepping up, a handshake to disengage. On knowing this one's over, but Keen's not finished yet. Bailout, bailout, absolutely nothing out here for the side of BLG. A one team fight from Gen G. The culling was crucial, and the, the ulti from Lahens to zone the back line from the fight was massive. As Genji now threatened the tier one. Bubble. Big forward, solid start, pays. Trying to find the ball, but it's Chobi who will get the kill in the end. Even if Genji doesn't get the fight, just getting the Drake alone is huge because it delays the point of the game where they have to fight guaranteed. And you already mentioned Lance is also keen, threatening so much there, standing. And BLG's comp really relies on being the aggressor, being the one going in, getting that backline access. But a lot gets invested into trying to kill Canyon. But due to the fact that he's Maokai, it's so hard to rely and lock this man down. There's the wave, and then Keen here. And Lahans keep on Elk and Knight away from this fight. There isn't really any recompense for BLG as they get chased down in the extended fight. BLG kind of grasping at straws, right? Going for the 50-50, knowing it was their best option. If they had gotten it, they might have felt like that trade was worthwhile because they lose the Drake, because they lose the kills. Gen G now in a winning position with a gold advantage and starting to feel much more confident on the map. Uh, so BLG's uh, comp works really well at just killing a single target really fast, right? Because you've got Lethali, Callista, you've got the dive coming out from Knight and Jun. In that last fight, if they had collapsed onto Canyon once the ult had come through, it could have been a one team fight. The problem was that the follow-up just didn't quite come together, and so BLG ended up being very split. Pays dashing in, getting a bit of a chunk onto On. Genji, if they can leverage the single target CC they have, 
Destiny now coming out. They want perfect information. It's Bin on the side. Bin finding multiple members. Tidal wave to immediately disengage. Culling now fired back. Pays blinking health bar, but Gen G the ones on the chase. The disengage is so powerful from Gen G. BLG were very keen to get in the thick of that fight, but the Maokai ultimate, the Nami ultimate, are such difficult walls to get past that BLG are struggling to find the angles. Problem is that Bin, he can ignore all of that, but the rest of his team can't, so while he is seeing, use this ghost, got into the enemy backline, the rest of the team just can't walk through that choke point, so they just have to watch Bin, he gets to disengage, the play, Ended up working out there, and this is Gen.G. Now, once Corky gets to that third item, these fights are going to get even harder as the poke is actually going to start mattering more and more. Well, so this is the thing, right? While Knight had a really good laning phase, as he transitioned more into the mid game, he was grouping up a little bit more with his team, spending less time in a side lane. But Chovy, I mean, he was Chovy, right? He was, <laughs> as, he, as he often does. As he often does, to his namesake. <laughs> And he was dedicated to just making sure that he was staying relevant in farm. And while he did get caught out on a side lane, look at that gold difference. 1.4k. Two fully completed items. He's likely working towards the Malignants next. He's got two levels up on Knight. Admittedly, Knight about to take over to level 12. But the side lane control is so much more in favor of Gen G. And even though BLG were off to such a great start, the momentum is shifting. And we're seeing how hard it is for this dive comp to work against the amount of utility oh, that Genji's comp provides. Right. Playing for a bit of vision there. All of BLG grouping up again. The potential for them to one-shot an isolated target with the Vex, with the Vi, is there. But need to find that perfect angle. And Genji backing off, giving them that respect. They're so reliant on getting the resets also because Oh, particularly yeah. with the Renata, right? Actually being able to get value out of the bailout is so pivotal here in the extended fight. The damage but also Knight's in ultimate, right? You yeah. just want to go pop, pop, pop. Exactly. If you're not able to do so, you lose so much of your comp's power. And this is Gen G with a really good disengage composition. Look at Jun's angle, they though. To he find. he yeah. has good information. The dragon spawns in a minute's time. Oh, you Shun. mentioned earlier that uh, Gen G can afford to give this one up if they want to wait longer. Even try and play for Baron. Should. Walking up immediately, trying to lock down the hands. That's the fog coming for Knight, but the ulti crucially does not connect. There is no follow for the side of BLG. Saddle Church not hitting major cooldown gone. And now BLG needs to get the hell out. Keen stepping up. Hustle takeover not coming in quite quick enough. Oh. And now Elk is looking to turn it. The damage oh. coming in for the Callista bubble. Hitting three. It's clutch from Lahans to stop the turn. Pays pulling through. Been trying to body block, but BLG getting rushed Lush. down. BLG being pushed off the objective, pushed off the mid lane. Keen still has the ultimate, chooses not to commit it. But the combo doesn't work for PLG. They thought they'd caught Lahens out, but the timing of the ultimate from Knight was off. That gave time for Lahens to flash, and then Shun is just stuck there. He's stuck in the middle of five Genji members who quickly take him out. The oh, TP is now TP coming through. Pays, big chunk on the on. They can't contest this. They don't have the HP bars. Big thing here is with on so low, no ultimate available. Hey, I don't know if you should. Walking up into Pays, a risky proposition, trying to keep him out of that choke. TF Destiny now Vision. coming in. Bin off to the side, but they spot the flank coming. Keen, the flash out from on. Auto attack going forward, Knight locked up. Keen finding the angle. Keen on the back line, everybody pulling out the bailout. Not quite there. Bin, though, trying to make the difference. Bin. Pulling Canyon back. Shun, is he ready for the follow up? Three blinking out front to the side of BLG, but they want to make the fight happen. And it is Bin in the clutch. Keen tries to find the angle, but now he's caught between three. Has to run for his life, and Bin's not done yet. Nice back step on the bubble. Will be forced to walk away briefly, but Bin sparks hope for the side of BLG. It's the heroics of Bin. Chovy doesn't have TP. I don't know if he can get it, or is it going to Keen? Keen out following. It's the power of the Callista McKean here, trying to get one back. Bail out there to the side. Any potential turn. Canyon amongst three. Canyon going to try to take down Elk. Ulti again from Knight going wide. Canyon trying to find space, but he's still living for a brief moment. He flashes out, and Knight, the team of BLG, they're going to risk the 50-50. Here comes Chovy. Canyon buying space. Chovy on the way. Gen G in the extended exchange will finally secure the Drake. What are these HP bars? Everyone on BLG was so low. But Bin, I mean, Bin ends up dying in the end. Well, how did he die? Whoa. Whoa. Oh, Chovy. He will find the package. Is that a Baron? There's no TP on Knight. He's going to be dead for 34 seconds. Uh, I still, no, OK, the Baron is a little too risky. But what a crazy sequence of events. For so long, Genji just couldn't find any kills. But it ends up being a dragon secured for Genji. Oh.
BLG introduced just a little bit of chaos as this starts off looking completely unplayable here for BLG. Onzo almost dead, Keen's on a flank, but crucially, the target selection just isn't there. And the moment that anyone on GT walks <laughs> off, there is Bin on the Cassante. He was a nightmare for Gen G last year. And he's won here again as he takes down the biggest damage threat that Gen G have. Chovy can Chovy, but Cassante can Cassante. And Bin did exactly that. He oversteps his bounds though. He goes to toe with the one and only Chovy. He gets a kill onto La Hens, but Chovy trades it back. What a crazy sequence of events. Oh. But crucially, the most important thing about all of this is Chovy just completed Malignant. He has a 3k gold lead overnight, a three level lead overnight. This monster in the mid lane is fully online and BLG will have to overcome him if they want to bring us to game five. A steep hurdle, no doubt, Ben, again for the second game in the row, trying to make the hero play, trying to be the one to make the difference in the clutch. And again, he came up successful, but is it enough to bring BLG back into this game? Has to respond to this wave. Destiny coming out from Keen. Just trying to get a bit of information here so the team can approach the bear and clear out the vision. Knight has a free level deficit. Free levels! Yeah. <laughs> so hard, so much base damage is being lost, sitting on the same level as Shun is, on the same level as Elk. And Bin's heroics was enough in that fight, but now that Corky is at the free item point, it's going to be so much harder. BLG, though, we saw there, and that's something that I think Gen G is going to remember from their last couple of series as well. Can never be counted out. If anyone on Gen G, if Chovy missteps, walks up to a wave, gets taken down at the start of a fight, you know BLG are immediately going to start that Nash, but the disengage on Gen G is going to become an even bigger problem as we get later into the game. This is the time it is truly terrifying to play against Gen.G. Their discipline around the map, their macro, what they're known for. The fact that they showed up today and fought fire with fire in so many of these early games. Probably catching a lot of BLG fans off guard, but this is the place where they are their most lethal. It's on BLG to find the angle against all of the little cats in the brushes, against the destiny of the Twisted Fate. They have to somehow surprise Gen.G, find the pick, find the setup necessary to bring themselves back into this game. And the biggest surprise for me coming in is the fact that Pays and Lahans, I don't think that they could have done what they did without the help of Canyon. He still, to me, is the biggest contributor. But the fact that the 2v2, I was expecting coming into today, that that was going to be so lopsided. I don't think Pays and Lahans have necessarily had a standout performance, but the expectation versus reality still, I think also not what BLG was expecting. Certainly not. The Senna nullifying the first two games in so many moments. Lista in game three, now the Lucian, Nami in game four. Lahens hitting so many Shun bubbles, so many ward. disengages. Genji, no. Shun, Chovy stepping up, Poke coming through. Canyon trying to collapse. Luckily, the empowered blast cone there to take Shun out. The tension continues to mount. BLG's backs are against the one. Of course, they will have the lower bracket if they fall today, but they don't want to fall hit. Nice oh, damage. Oh, from Pays is good. Dash is in, dash is out. Bin now locked up. Cat's coming over the wall to follow up. Nature looking to grasp, looking to lock down. BLG the wave there to follow as well. Fate's call to get a bit more space, but Gen G forcing BLG back, setting their sights on the Nash. They can collapse on Shun on the flank. Keen, he has ult. Ten, eight seconds, seven seconds. Oh, there's no way. The rest of the team is going to have to try and help him. Shun, run, though, so Shun, fast. Run. Knight waiting, hovering around. He gets out. Wow, okay, he's actually able to stop. Nothing that. happened. TP back in. Look at Ont's HP, though. Elk trying to vamp back up. Flash, Whoa. dash. Desperation from the side of BLG. I mean, he thought that he'd caught Pays out of position, but a nice response. And now the Baron is being it's forced. It's 100% the Hail Mary. They need a miracle now. In Chengdu in front of the home crowd. Anticipation. The oh, flank coming in good. from Keen, BLG being heralded to their demise. Bin? But Bin once again Bin? wants to make the difference. Pulling back onto three. It goes nine to the backside, locking multiple numbers of the fear, but he's already getting shredded through. And Pays is still standing. There's absolutely no follow up on the illusion, but finally, Chovy will drop. Hope for a brief oh, moment for BLG. Yes. The flash over the wall coming in is clutch. BLG, it shouldn't be possible. But they're finding the way in the fight. Keen with the gold guard will lock up Bin. Pays is still standing. Pays stands tall, and Bin drops. Elk running for the hills, and Gen G taking the fight. And another wave from the hands, not gonna find Elk, but it's Gen G that gets the team fight win in the end. And the one member that has been criticized most on this roster has been Pace. But in these team fights, 
He is not going down. An ace is secured for Genji. A phenomenal display of talent from both sides. We're not done. Because I'm But sure. the objective does not go down. We look back at the fight and Finn with a great way to start things off. A two-man knockup. The follow-up from Knight barely does anything, but it's enough to set up the play for Finn to chase down Chovy. Meanwhile, Pays gets isolated, but it doesn't matter. Keen is able to lock down a member on the backside. But Pays is able to navigate his way through the fight. A clutch bubble from the hens as well. These are crazy team fights. So many members at the very cusp of losing their life. But it is Gen G that stands strong. In the end, Gen G gets Soul Point, but no Soul BLG already got the two. And yes, a free kick gold lead. It's something, but we see these team fights still feel so tense. Bin doing an unreasonable amount of heavy lifting here. I mean, the problem is Knight is just so weak. He's only got two items. He's nearly 4K behind. He's about to get Flame Horizon by Chovy. And Chovy is in one, it's on one of his best champions. Level 16, the Rockets are fully maxed out. And the Baron will begin once more. Package is there. I know BLG can contest this. There is so much threat here from Gen G. They need to find a pick. 15 seconds on the package timer, give or take, but they don't have perfect information on it. Can they interrupt this? Gold card in on the ball breaker. Still getting that forward. Should get it deleted. Now going to the back side of the fight. Canyon gets an excellent angle on the ulti. Not going to try to fall over the back side. And instantly, the heads have taken down Gribble for a bit extra healing. And now it's Elf, the one who's coming alive. The Lethality Callista taking over. Pace shut down. BLG found their moment. This time around. They waste so much just killing Shun. Shun's at the yeah. main goal. Trying to take on out, trying to get something, trying to delay it, but Chovy will fall. Gold card, not enough. Chengdu roars for the side of BLG. A great team fight from BLG as they swing the momentum ever so slightly back in their favor. They're showing that the fights are possible to win as they're able to lock down Pays. But listen to that crowd roar as they try to revitalize hope back into BLG. Well, crucially, 30 seconds on Chovy doesn't have a TP available. So BLG, we're seeing the pings go down. They're on their way to Baron. And Gen G, without their main damage dealer, I don't think they're gonna be able to contest this. Canyon looking for a steal as possible, but highly risky. Not the fastest Baron, though. Sustained damage, not the strength of BLG's composition, but they'll start it anyway. He's on his way. Good night, sitting off the fog of war. No, no, no flash. Is available. Night, no flash. Canyon doesn't have the flash to get into the pit. I think there. this Baron is secured. Okay, trying to zone them back. It's taking a bit of time. Pay's trying to step up and poke. Ulti goes in, been there to body block. Knight playing for the Using fight. the space, 2K. Colin coming out, Baron taken down. Genji now backing up. Just wanted to poke, what else can they do? Accepting the defeat there. Don't want to risk anything else. BLG with the Baron. Spectators to the objective. Without Chovy, they just don't quite have the poke. BLG stands strong and they demonstrate their world class team fighting. It's Shun that gets caught out. He does what he can by utilizing the ultimate. Look at Finn on the side as well. But it's this crucial fear that connects the Renata ultimate onto three, along with the knockup from Elkin on. They were massive in that team fight. Oh, the poke. It's the one two there, as you're saying, Vedi. On one hand, Knight finding CC on. Layering on top, and then Chenji also using the package only to kill the Vi. Not one of the more crucial members. This bot lane from BLG. Yeah, They're no. stepping up when they need to. I mean, admittedly, a lot of the heavy lifting is being done by Bin to set up. And, and the reason why BLG are even at this point in this game is because of what he's been able to do on Cassante. But I keep my eyes on Chovy. Close to level 17, the Void Staff finished. With the Baron buff, BLG will have control over the map. They have push in mid, push in bot. They're setting up for the next dragon and looking to chip away at some of these towers. Gen.G grouping on the bottom side. They know they have to concede at least one tower, willing to give up mid lane tier two. Careful not to overstep. Losing a fight when the enemy has Baron would be the end of this game, would take us to game five. Gen.G overall still incredibly strong. The quirky, powerful. Might not be the end of it. Because right now, it looks like BLG is going to pick up the Drake, so we're going to go possibly to seven Drakes before the Soul Point is taken by either team. Gen G does have a, an 
okay amount of vision. Obviously, has the TF hold as well, but I don't think they're going to be contesting for this one. Just once this timer on the Baron to run out, because the Rebel Baron probably hasn't been that impactful. Got a turret or two, but outside of that, in hip standing, base still up. Are we gonna? It's gonna come down to another team fight. Gen G, though, they're making their way over. 23 seconds, oh. and they're first to the objective. This game is just delivering on all fronts. Oh. Gen G at the precipice of making their way yeah. to a final at MSI. Chovy would be his first international final. Whereas BLG looking to keep this series alive. The dragon is up. Keen separated from the team, but he has his ultimate. About a tick over. There it is, level 17. The oh. dragon started off by BLG. And G happy with this. Chovy oh, damage poke. is real. Knight, the last remaining member of the victorious JDG roster, but Ben wants a trophy for himself, wants to take us to oh, a game Knight. five. Pulling Canyon back in the meantime. Knight now getting poked out by Chovy, though, and it's a disaster. Canyon still standing. BLG ushered into the pit. The soul will go to Gen G. It'll take a miracle. The hostile takeover. Not going to do enough. 4K getting lower. The reset now coming in. Knight TPing back to the fight, trying to find an angle. Oh, Everyone gosh. flashing out. Soul to the side of Gen G. But no one dies, a lot of summoners being used. We'll see if Gen.G wants to turn us into something more. But everyone in BLG gets out. The damage from Chovy was just crazy there. Knight was, he did nothing in the fight. He was completely removed. Chovy asserting his dominance as he forced Knight back to base and BLG forced to retreat. The soul now secured the Elder an opportunity in five and a half minutes. Crucially, so much shred available, and again, just watch see. Chovy. I mean, you just have to watch him on the back line. The damage is good. It was a single rocket taking out Knight, and then the culling on the side as well. Pays melting them in the Baron pit. A two pronged attack from Gen G. Where POG, they just they couldn't do anything. They just had to retreat. No opportunity once the health bars are already that low. POG gonna find themselves lucky that they're able to get out there in the first place. Elk in particular, if that GA gets procced, that's such a big cooldown. No longer available to him. You see as well, Chenji itemization. It's basically targeting him. Void Staff, Lord Doms, Terminus for Keen. Everything to try and take this Cassante down so that they can get to the rest of the team. The squishy members, the Chovy and Pei is going to be able to blow up in seconds. And it's Chemtech. I mean, the, the entire composition of BLG relies on bursting down a member, maybe finding a Vex reset or approaching a fight favorably by killing Chovy or Pays as quickly as possible so Bin can run rampant. And now it is that much harder because of this soul. Oh, yeah. You're definitely right. It, it's so effective at mitigating burst. The extra resistances you get when you're below 50% just, just offer so much value. I mean, there's a Knight's Vow, there's a Locket. They have so many luxury Nine. item purchases. And Lahance has been hitting just about every bubble in these fights. BLG, I think they probably get one more shot, one more excellent team fight. But if they get it, they have to end the game immediately. It doesn't get any easier. That said, we're getting to the point in the game where one convincingly win team fight can be the end. And if we go way back to the fight in mid that happened, I think about 10, 12 minutes ago, Chovy flashing there, even though there wasn't really a chance for the kill, just because he wanted to maximize his damage. This man had so many second places in the LCK, had so many disappointments. He'd never been to an international final. And on the Corky, this is the point where you want to get. This is the point, and we saw it in that last fight. I mean, this game really is all about him. He said that he wanted to prove that he wasn't just the best. He was by far the best. And I, I mean, I'm going to have to say it, that he is getting the better of Knight in this series. Of course, Knight could still turn this around. A single ultimate could change everything. Mother Hill Mary, maybe BLG looking for the team fight. They don't start it. They get the Twisted yeah, Fate ulti. ultimate. The bot wave is a bit awkward for Gen G, but they'll likely just abandon it for now. Back out onto the map, and there's the package for Chovy. If anyone were to force a Baron, now would be a good time for Gen G. They'll catch the mid wave. And they can just use the Baron to start a fight on their terms. Double GA. Poke has to land here, particularly on on. I mean, here we go. Genji in the pit, focusing on this the objective. Melts. Package is there, getting shredded. Shun, Shun. looking to lock down Chovy. Immediately going to ult. The faulty now going to take him back, though. Package keeping him safe. They're trying to.
to force the fight, but Gen G pays still standing. Baron's still up in the meantime, but Gen G find the advantage. One member already down, shut out of the equation. Knight going gold, and Gen G again finding their angle. The Baron will start to release, and Knight will drop. Bailout not enough. Elf running, they're desperately trying to kill Pays. And now it is a story. It's been so many times in this series. It has been versus the world. Elk and on doing Chobie. their best to support, but Chobi getting chunked out. The spears are still Whoa. lethal from the side of Elk, but the rocket is there. The big one for Chobi. The finish to the fight. Gen G about to end it here. BLG crumbling in the face of the bear, and Gen G disciplined in the fight. BLG will be picked apart in the fight. Genji spread out and they take them down one by one. The Baron now uncontested is easy pickings for Genji. I thought they were going to look for the ends, but they don't want to risk it. T uh, TP on Knight, TP on Bin. They don't want to walk into a trap. Instead, they're just going to go for the Baron here. But they're hey, low. They're, they're low. They're just, low. I think they should still be fine between Chovy and Canyon. I just TP. But no great wards here for BLG. Crucially, Genji still going to be able to break the inhibit the Baron. A colossal win because it sets up this Elder Dragon. I mean, we look back at this fight, and the lockdown comes down on the Chovy, but a great use of the package takes him to safety. The dive comes down onto Keen, but look at the positioning of Pays. He gets a little worried on the back line, a good cleanse from him, but he's able to create enough space. And then the fight just becomes so disjointed as Keen and Chovy turn their attention on tonight. Keen, the sort of unsung hero of this game, as he's dished out so much damage in the fight, Bin doing what he can, but it is not enough to win the fight for BLG. Bin also throwing a lot of resources, does kill the hands, but Pace is able to stay away from on an elk. They were trying to kill the AD carry. If they gotten him, that could have been big, but he was able to flash over the wall as they were thrown at him as Bin again trying to make the difference. The pullback there, bubble good from the side of Gen G. Cats now coming up to look for the disengage shunt. It's disjointed. Knight can go forward, but he's only connected on the canyon. Tidal wave is there as well. Hostile takeover for on. Does nothing. Fates call the pulling back. Gen G on the march. Gen G looking to put the final nail on the coffin. It's a three-man knockup. Elf finishes the job on Canyon. They kill one. But Gen G are still stepping up. Bin wants to make the difference, but it's pain. Calling Elk, cutting him down. That's not enough. The bailout does nothing. BLG about to lose it all. Chovy, he's gonna do it. He's gonna make his first international final. Chovy amongst his brothers, backed by Canyon, the entire team. He will make it to the international final, waiting for a worthy challenger. An incredible game four that showcased some world-class team fighting. But it was Gen G in the extended fights that was able to come out on top. So many were excited at seeing these two Titans clash and they delivered. But it was Gen G that came out on top today and it is Chovy that will make his way to his first international final. This series is about deciding who is the best mid laner in the world, and today it is Chovy. And now every other team watching, BLG included, know who they have to contend with if they want to walk away with the MSI trophy. And yes, for Keen, for Lahens, for Pace, this is a monumental step as well. But crucially, crucially for Chovy, finally makes it. And he is the guy that people have been talking about. He's the guy that wasn't able to deliver. He sure as hell delivered today, no doubt in my mind. We're going to head over to the analyst desk, but stick around for the Verizon post-game interview with none other than Chovy in just a few minutes. Yes, he's usually very stoic in these interviews, so uh, Laura usually <laughs> has her work cut out for her, but perhaps with this achievement of getting to that international finals, finally we'll get a little bit more, as more as we saw in the room. Yes, yeah, so I was going to say, he just made his first international final. Let's, Let's go. go. I I'm so happy for Chovy. Obviously, 